What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And you are tuned in to another episode of Poor Minds. Where a drunk mind speaks sober thoughts. You know what? <laughs> All right. Move. <laughs> Damn. Y'all know we in the hood. Bugs and shit. <laughs> I'm fucking weak. What's up, girl? What's up, girl? First of all, let me just say, we are on tour right now, and it's so lit. If you have not got your tickets to see the For Rich or For Poor, so you are missing out, y'all. It has been an amazing tour. Um, Y'all see I got the merch on. This is the long sleeve one joint we got. It's a little big on me, because this is actually J-Bone's shirt. Shout out to uh, DJ J-Bone. That's my dog. Um, I got you a shirt. I'm about to send it to you when I take this all off. Hopefully anyway, it ain't musty, j I oh, know, because it's getting too loud. <laughs> j if it's musty, please don't blast me, friend. I love you, friend. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I feel like this is like, we always talked about this, but the merch is super hard. I love the merch. Tour has been going great. And also, I feel like the show is going great, too. Make sure y'all like... I got like, on an 85 shirt. 85. Shout out to 85, mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Shit. It's one of their um, merch shirts. But make sure y'all like and subscribe. We never say that at the beginning. So Yeah, we need to start saying it at the beginning yes. of every show. We actually probably should like record a little Some intro song. so then we can just insert it mm. and then it'll just be mm. at the beginning of every video. But we got a new intro. Shout out to Javier. Yes, he be doing his damn thing. thing. Give it up for Javier. Because one thing he gonna do, he gonna get it done, period. So anyways, my good sis, what you been up to, girl? It hit that spot. Mm-hmm. That be a little... This I'm realizing. I don't think I like Chardonnay as much as I used to think I did. It's it's very tart and dry. It is, but I feel like I used to really It'd love like this. Chardonnay. Yeah. I feel like I used to really love Chardonnay. Mm. Now I think I'm more of a Pinot, Pinot Grigio Sauvignon Blanc kind of girl. I, honestly, I've been back on the red, me, myself. I'm I like back red. On the red. I like red, but I feel like I got to drink red when I'm, like, in a chill Chill. environment and I'm about to go to sleep. Because then, too, you know, it be making your lips red and your tongue red. And you be getting a little milk, I mean, a little wine mustache. It be getting caught in my whiskers. Mm -hmm. I cannot drink red wine on the show anymore. Yeah, I can't. I just can't drink it if I'm trying to, like, be alert. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I'm about to go to sleep, whatever, cool. But... Mm -hmm. But yeah, I kind of feel you too. Like the Chardonnay is cool, but I'm definitely not getting the Chardonnay. You don't anymore. feel you're not feeling the vibe. Yeah, anymore. I'm not feeling the vibes. Not even like the other episode that we did. We drank Pinot Grigio. Yeah, I fuck with you Pinot Grigio. You drank the fuck out that shit. It's good to me. It, it has you was a done nice. Before we got to the bar, it has, it has a nice. What do people? What do wine connoisseurs say? It has a nice after note. Oh, bites? bites. Is it bites? Mm-hmm. Okay. It has that. Whatever it is that's after, the aftertaste. Mm-hmm. It has a nice aftertaste. This tastes a little musty. This tastes like... After. This tastes like the peen right after he got done hooping. Mm-hmm. The Pinot Grigio... And he tastes, ain't showered yet. And, he ain't and it's showered. a little salty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Pinot Grigio is the peen fresh out the shower. Amen. Lace so, with baby powder. Yeah. You right. You you hit the nail on the head. That's Literally. What a, that's what the wine connoisseurs say. Mm-hmm. Period. Would you ever be a sommelier? You know what? Honestly, there's a movie on Netflix about um, a black wine sommelier, and it's actually a really good movie. But after watching it, what's the movie called? Somebody can Google it for me real quick. It's about a Netflix, a, a guy, um, and it's a, it's a black movie. But anyways, he is a wine connoisseur or whatever, but honestly, <laughs> I, after watching that movie, I was like, hell no. Like, it's a lot of fucking studying, and you have to know so much. Like, they literally test you on these smallest things. Yeah. Like, it's, no, I don't think I, I don't think I could ever do it. I feel like I used to be like, oh, I'm a wine connoisseur, because I used to work at TGI Friday. Shout out to them potato skins. But, wait, what? I really did. You think- thought you was a wine connoisseur because you worked no, at TGI Friday. I'm not gonna lie, I did. I did, but it's because I knew more than the average person about wine. For I real? did. Yes, I did. Because you have to know a little some some. I guess I just always felt like at most restaurants, like rest- well, let me say restaurants like TGI Fridays. Um, what? Because what you trying to say? Let me get to what I'm trying to get say. Get to it. TGI Fridays, Applebee's, Chili's. To me, they all First of all, TGI Fridays and Applebee's is not the 
same. They in the same boat. Girl, they are. Fuck you. All of those are in the same category. Okay. And I feel like those type of restaurants have a limited wine list. Now, when you start getting into the steakhouses and stuff like that, then you have an extensive wine list. Like, you know, mm-hmm. you have about like anywhere between 40 to 100 wines depending on what steakhouse you go to. Right. I feel like in like TGI Fridays and shit, they might have like two Chardonnays, two Pinot Grigio. And that was hard to learn, bitch. Uh, um, what do they call they it? Got a, a, a red blend. They, they do got the blend, bitch. <laughs> They do got a good blend. A red blend, a Moscato, and a Riesling. And then there you go. But that, I will it. say, I'm not going to lie. Okay, so Maybe a lot a of y'all... Prosecco. Okay, so sorry. The movie is called Uncorked. Mm-hmm. You can check that out on Netflix. It's like about um, a black guy who was a... What's, what's it called? Somal- Somalier. Somalier. So anyways, yeah, the movie's called Uncorked, but... I don't think people realize this. I don't know if it's still that way, but when I worked at TGI Fridays, TGI Fridays is a very bar-driven restaurant. Mm. Everything is about the bar. So literally, TGI Fridays used to have competitions. Mm. If you're a bartender at TGI Fridays, you literally have to compete in a competition. So it starts at your restaurant, so y'all compete. Whoever wins the bar contest, they move on to the next level. Mm. And it eventually gets into a world, a worldwide contest. Seriously. Wow. No, I'm dead ass. I'm wow. Dead ass. Wow. Wow. No, I'm, I'm serious. really shocked. No, I'm serious. So it's, were you part of the contest? I used to hate participating, bitch. So, I mean, what exactly did y'all have to do? Did y'all have to, like, yes. the bottles? So, the... it was about, uh, oh, I know you dropped the tricks. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna lie, though. Never dropped a bottle. Never dropped a bottle, bitch. I used to... Now, I didn't take the contest seriously because I just didn't, because I didn't... But I used to, like... I'm not playing. That's why by the time we got to the club, that's why my drinks were so good. If you want to learn how to bartend for real and you really want to make drinks, work at TGI Friday, I thought bitch. he was going to say, hit me up. <laughs> no, bitch. I don't know how to make drinks no more. But I'm telling you, the reason I used to make drinks so good is because TGI Fridays, I don't know if they're still like that, like I said, but they do not play about their bar. Really? They're ve- you will never go to TGI Fridays and taste like a nasty drink. Only if the bartender doesn't know what they're doing. But if you look at, like, the recipe and exactly how to make it, it's a tasty, fine drink now. Mm. So, like I was saying, um, yeah, they're very known for, like, their bar. So, like, you would compete at that level. And it's like a worldwide competition. I don't know if they still do it because I haven't worked there, obviously, in a long time. And you had to? You didn't have the option to opt out? If you were a bartender and... At Fridays, you wanted to be a bartender because that's who, that's who made the money. Period. But what if I was like, I don't want to be part of the competition. They would have fired me. They wouldn't have fired you, but you would definitely go back to being a, a waitress. <laughs> yes. And the bar, that's where it was at. I'm not going to lie. My homegirl, Keisha, shout out to Keisha. That's when me, me and her became friends. We used to turn that bar out. Mm. We used to have karaoke nights in that bitch. It got to one point, y'all. We actually had cleared out a section in the dining room area for people to dance and had got so lit in that bitch. Y'all are wild. I'm telling you, I've been a wild girl. Who clears out a section of TJ, TGI Fridays for a bitch to shake that ass? You don't gotta tell me you've been a wild girl. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I believe you. But yeah, so, no, I'm not a wine kind of steward, but I know more than the average. So, like, I know it's been a while since you worked there. So, did they have, like, an extensive wine list? We did not have an extensive wine list. But the wine at TGI Fridays was so popular that they had, like, wine nights. So, mm. they would have, like, half-priced bottles of wine. So, But it had to be you and another person. Mm. When I tell y'all, them white ladies would leave that hospital, clock out from them little nursing jobs. They used to be in that bitch lit. But they screw up. Wine mustaches everywhere, bitch. It wasn't just me. <laughs> the wine mustaches were No, out. but I'm not gonna lie. Like, I used to fuck with CGI Fridays. And the food is good. That's why I'm saying. Chili's. I'm, that's why I'm saying I'm not trying to be funny. Elise. <gasps> <laughs> Excuse me? You didn't like Chili's back in the day? You didn't fuck with the Southwestern egg rolls? Mm. Are you. <laughs> Did no, you like Chili's? I'm not going to lie. I was never a Chili's girl because... Y'all are wild. TGI Fridays actually has good fucking food. That's why I said... That sizzling chicken and shrimp used to be my jam. Everything. The Cajun shrimp and chicken pasta, baby. I remember the menu. 
the buffalo, I mean, the uh, the skins, the, the potato, potato skins, skins, everything, the wings are good. TGI Fridays actually has top tier food. I don't care what nobody says. Like that's why I said you can't compare it to Applebee's. Then they came out with the uh fro with the food in the frozen section. I used to always buy the mozzarella sticks. Mm. At mozzarella the grocery sticks store. be busting. Spinach dip, fire. Potato. They have the uh, what's the potato soup? Baked potato soup, fire. Oh, I never potatoes. had that. I, the Jack Daniels chicken and shrimp. Elise. Hold on, it's getting too loud, Elise. Turn up. I'm telling you, I don't care what nobody says. I don't know who is behind the bar menu oh my and God. the food. Okay, so let me say this. You know how, like, as you get older, Bitch, we need a, at this point, we need a sponsorship from TGI products. Because we need to them too motherfucking but much right now. But this is what I'm saying. You know, as you as you grow, you know your taste buds change. You can't eat the stuff that you used to eat. No, it's eat. a lot of shit. I can't. I, I, that's why I said I used to like chili yeah, and TGI gotta, Fridays, but I don't really eat it. I no guarantee more. you, you can go to TGI Fridays right now. Well, first of all, that's why I said I don't really eat it because <laughs> when I when <laughs> you know it's the TGI Fridays. If you live in Atlanta, then you know it's the TGI Fridays in the airport. Always after you go through like security. Well, mm -hmm. before you go through security and stuff. So every time I would like touch back down in Atlanta on my way home, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would stop at TGI Fridays and get the chi the sizzling chicken and shrimp. But bitch, during the pandemic, they closed down? No, they took the sizzling chicken off the menu. It's not on the menu anymore. And that's one of the And that's the things. only thing I used to get because the potatoes was good. Mm. And it used to be on that hot plate so that cheese would be real crisp. Real crisp. Ooh, woo. But they ain't got it no more. Damn. So I ain't been to TGI Friday since, and it's been about a year. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know who's behind the menu and the drinks, but they have that formula down. I feel like, like I said, there's places that I used to eat all the time. Even like McDonald's. I cannot eat McDonald's. Did I really get sick. You used to eat Long John Silver's? Yeah, I did. You did? Mm -hmm. I like a little fish plate, a little uh, hush puppies. A <laughs> hush puppy? You was eating like a hush puppy. Oh, oh my God! Not a Long John Silver. Not a Long John Silver baby. <laughs> a Long John baby. <laughs> a Long John baby, a little mermaid. <laughs> no, I never ate Long John Silver. It's I'm like, not gonna lie. I like the batter. The batter on that fish is a little different. It's good, but I haven't had it in literally since I was younger. So that's why I said my taste bud changes. So there are things that I used to eat as a child that I can't eat anymore. I cannot eat McDonald's. I cannot do it. No, but me either. I can't eat McDonald's I can't. No I just, more. I don't know. Maybe just, a fry, but that's it. Yeah, maybe the fries. The breakfast, I can do. I can do the breakfast. I'm not going to lie. But I can what's do the, the difference between the breakfast and the and lunch? Just, I feel like, because the bur I don't know. I don't like the burgers. It's something about, I don't know. Last time I had it, I literally got sick. I don't mm. know. I just got sick. But I will say TGI Fridays, I can eat that all day, every day. Shout out to TGI Fridays, but we need to move on. We do, because we can <laughs> talk about food all day. All motherfucking day. You know what I decided I'm going to do this summer? Well, obviously, I can't do it during the summer because I'm working, but I decided I'm going to take... Where? Huh? Where? I'm working, I said, during the summer. Where are you working? I have a job. No. I'm working right now, ho What <laughs> the fuck you mean? You work five hours out the week. <laughs> you got me fucked up. I work a lot. I got places to go and people to meet. You were disrespectful. We, we work a max of like 10 hours. No, we don't. This is an all-day job. Okay. Do we not be in the chats all day? No, we do. Working? We do. Oh, this is work. Work. Work, work, Anyways, work. like I said, I can't go on vacation right now. I don't know about you. <laughs> Where you going when you go? Um, I decided I'm going to go on a foodie vacation. Cool. So what I've I've started to can do. Can we please go to Greece? I've been dying to go to Greece. Yeah, I feel we like can go to everybody Greece. and their mama done been to Greece with me. Well, we have to start working on our end of tour vacation anyway. I think we should go to Greece. Okay, but anyways, I've decided like there's cities, and I've been looking at restaurants and like really popular places to go and like I've I've just started like in America. So I decided like after the end of the tour, I'm probably just gonna go by myself and like go to like maybe like a Chicago, a LA, a New York. I'm leaning towards New York. And I'm just gonna go for like- Oh, can I come? Mm, I'll think about it. Uh, <laughs> well, it was, it's supposed to be like an eat, pray, love moment, bitch. Can I get my Julia Roberts I'm not on? mad. I'm not, I only ask because I got mad restaurants in New York that I wanna go to that I gotta stay. Okay, well we can go to, my okay, Instagram. we can do New York together. Maybe I'll do, I'll probably do Chicago by myself. Eat, pray, love, supposed to be you go out the country. I know, but bitch, we on a budget. <laughs> 
can I can I help you? Damn, it's strict in this bitch. So yeah, anyways, I decided like right after tour, I'm gonna take like a foodie vacation and I'm just gonna go to a different city and I'm just gonna like eat. It's not about nothing else. I'm not going to no club. I'm not going dressing up and doing this. I'm just gonna go to eat. Let me tell you who not about to be in the club, who y'all not about to catch in the club for a long time, me. Because mm. I'm not trying to get monkey pox. I feel like you bitches was not taking COVID serious, but maybe y'all was taking monkey pox serious because don't nobody want to be ugly. <laughs> Bro, when I tell you... When you start talking about shit affecting people looks, oh, niggas gonna stay inside. And they niggas say ain't going like, outside. They like... Oh my God, it can be inside of your nose, inside of your mouth, mm -hmm. like on top of your face. Oh my God, y'all, the pictures that I have seen is absolutely horrible. Like, it's frightening. It's horrifying. It's horrifying. You know what's crazy? And, the I'm, people that, and I'm very scared and I just want, like, even at our last show, we definitely was making people use hand sanitizer oh, before we did the meet and greet and everybody. going forward, we're doing that for every show. You know what's crazy to me though? The people that might were, need to wear a mask. The people that were so loud about, oh, COVID is a conspiracy, anti vax. Mm. Them people is going to get vaccinated now. But you know what's crazy? To get the monkey pox you gonna vaccine, get it? bitch, they got you got to be fucking fucking. It's the criteria to get a monkey pox, monkey pox vaccine is wild. Wait, what do you mean you got to be fucking fucking? I know that I've seen one of the criteria is like, oh, if you haven't had an STI in the past mm -hmm. year, then you can't get one. So we Damn, all. Well, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, so we're, like, kind of already disqualified. Oh, we are disqualified as fuck. I've seen this, like, you have to have had, like, multiple partners within, like, a week. Um, within a week? Yeah, literally. Oh, and wow. within, within the last 14 days, you have had to have more than one partner. Um, It's leaning towards, I think they said, like, um, like, gay men, bisexual men, and things like that. It's just like the criteria to get the vaccine is absolutely fucking wild. Like, damn, I'm gonna have to go up there and lie. Like, damn, yeah, I just fucked four niggas last night. Give me that shit. Because how y'all gonna know? I'm gonna lie too. I'm gonna lie too. Ah, I'm gonna eat it. I'm gonna just say something. <laughs> I'm gonna get it. <laughs> I'm gonna get it. I'm a liar. I'm a good liar. So I feel like if you just That's lie. Debatable. What? You being a good liar, I don't know if you gonna get it in that case. No, I'm not a good liar. Like, this bitch is lying. It's security. <laughs> I'm not a good it's liar. Out. To you. <laughs> to, to you. you. To other people, I lie very good. But yeah, I, just be safe out there. I feel like the monkey pox is scary. It's very fucking scary. And d don't touch me. That's all I'm saying. And I'm not being out. And I'm not. I'm not outside no more. I'm not smoking hookah. I know we had said that we wasn't smoking hookah no more, but we relapsed. We did relapse. We did relapse in Houston. But I, we smoked a little hooks in Houston. I ain't gonna lie. You know, we did what we. But I feel like the CDC just be making up shit. Like they don't know what's going on. I feel like. A bitch like me is running the CDC. I feel like everything live inside a hookah hose. Mm. Mm. I truly do. That's why shit becomes to Atlanta first. I feel like everything live inside that hookah hose and that water, that hookah water. Mm, mm, mm. You probably right. I'm telling you, because I don't think they be changing that shit for real. Do you think that monkey pox started in Atlanta? At Devon? Nah, I don't think so. Because it's called monkey pox because it started with monkeys, right? Mm -hmm. We ain't really got that, mon that many monkeys out here besides at the Atlanta Zoo. They'll I probably be smoking hookah in that bitch, too. They and the same hookah <laughs> company run everything on the east side, bitch. And they don't be cleaning out the hookahs. You think they got hookahs at the Atlanta Zoo? I know they got hookahs at the Atlanta Zoo, bitch. I smoked one. When now I went you to don't have people trying to go to the Atlanta, come to Atlanta just to go to the zoo because they think a hookah is. I went to the panda exhibit and I had me a watermelon mint, bitch. I know what goes on. Why would you lie like that? No, but for real, I don't mm. think it started here. I think it definitely started in another country. Okay. But I think some kind of way it... Everything just happened. But you know what? I will say, honestly, all jokes aside, Atlanta is the hub. Like, most of the time when you flying in from out the country, you're We have the biggest into, airport. Yeah, yeah, so you're coming in. It's coming. very dangerous Well, it's the here. busiest airport. I thought it was one of the biggest. It from is my one understanding, of the biggest. it's like one of like the top five biggest airports yeah, it is, in the world. But it's actually the number one busiest. As far as like oh, square yeah. footage, it's not the biggest, but it's definitely literally the busiest airport. Yeah. So I get why everything comes here. But yeah, y'all just be careful because it's wild out here. So what you gonna do to take precautionary measures? Stop sucking dick. 
I lied again. <laughs> Bitch, I... You see, I ain't say that. I, I just feel like, you know, I still... Are work... you going to sanitize the dick first, though? That's what you got to do. You gotta... Sanitize the dick? Yeah. What? Dick sanitizer? That's what we going to invent. Dick sanitizer. Yeah, y'all bet not still our fucking patent, bitches. <laughs> um, but no, you know what's crazy? I feel like when I go to the airport, I'm literally like only one of ten flavored people. dick sanitizer. Barbecue sauce. Honey mustard. Now we talking. A little bean. A little buffalo sauce. I like that. Mm -hmm. Anyways, but I feel like when we go to the airport, people aren't wearing masks anymore. Why? COVID is still active, too. We are in the middle of a double pandemic. Why do y'all not have y'all's masks on? Like, it doesn't bother you that fucking much. Yeah. People are really not wearing masks anymore. I still wear masks when I go to the grocery store. They no. trying to get double penetrated. Mood. Oh. We fighting to get... I thought... Okay. <laughs> Girl, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. Okay, let's get into this first topic. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And we will be in the city that never sleeps. That's right, NYC. We coming to you August 27th at the Town Hall. Yeah, and they definitely not getting no sleep after this show. So make sure that y'all get y'all tickets at poorminds.com. The show starts at 7 p.m. Yes, 7 p.m. And y'all know, I know y'all seen the clips. Y'all never know who gonna pull up when I tell y'all it's going stupid. Full of surprise. Dumb. Don't make Get your chopped cheese and show up at the door. Yeah. Okay, maybe not with the chopped cheese, but we'll see y'all Billy Rock at the door. <laughs> Period. Bye. Go ahead. Go ahead, little girl. For the first topic, we wanted to talk about females. You know, I feel like we want to do relationship things even when we're not in a relationship. Mm. And nothing is wrong with that. I don't have to be in a relationship with you for you to do relationship shit for me. Them the type of niggas I'm looking for. Shout out to the bread. <laughs> That's what I'm <laughs> looking <laughs> for. <laughs> Come to hell. No, but I feel like, for honestly, real, at though. this point in my life, I get it. You can't do wifey things for somebody that you're just dating. Whatever. I get that. But at the same time, at this age, if I'm dealing with you, it still needs to be enjoyable for me. Well, relationship standards, like, relationships are not the same as they used to be 10 years ago, 20 mm -hmm. years ago. So we need to take away all of those stigmas and restraints. Like what? I just feel like back in the day, like in order for a nigga to feel like he had to do certain shit for a woman, they had to be married. Mm. But they was also married at 19. Mm hmm Facts. And I already had three kids. Right, 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 like, right. Like times have changed. Times have evolved. I just feel like why we can't just have fun? Why do we got to be so strict? Like why in order for you to buy me a Birkin, we got to be together? I was going to talk about more so in line of like, <laughs> Maybe holding hands or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like your bar too low. <laughs> no, no, I'm just I'm just using that for an example though. Like I feel like if me and a nigga walk into dinner and I wanna hold his hand or I wanna be arm in arm with him, niggas take that shit so fucking deep, like, oh she wanna be with me. She she think that no, nigga, like we fucking, we going out to dinner, let's just, you know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't mean that we don't have to be in a relationship for you to just hold my hand or to be intimate outside of like fucking like, I don't you can wanna be, hold your hand though if we not in a relationship I mean that's you but I mean it's okay it to, is me yeah I, I don't mind holding a nigga little hand I don't wanna hold your hand cause Why? what if somebody else walk in now he think we together <laughs> and we not in a relationship so now you cock block but in this moment I'm with you and I'm enjoying your company so you be out on dates with niggas and still be choosing I be scoping the scene, always. Until a nigga lock me down and put a ring on it, I'm always looking. Always scoping the scene. Until you have a ring. Even if you're, like, boyfriend, girlfriend, you scoping the scene. Oh, well, no. If I'm in a committed relationship, that's different. Okay, like, okay. if I'm in a relationship, then I'm in a relationship. Right, 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 right. And I'm right. going to be committed to my man. But... So I shouldn't have said a ring. But if I'm single, like, if we just dating, yes, I don't give a fuck. We on a date, I'm still looking. So they looking, I'm looking too. So if you're just like dating somebody and he tries to hold your hand, what you gonna you're not you're gonna be like, mm. I mean if he tries to hold my hand in cool if we on a little date, yeah, we yeah. hold hands. 
Okay. But I'm not gonna hold your hand first. Right. So, but as long, if he tries to hold your hand, you're not gonna stop him. Why would I stop him? We on a date. Okay. I don't like you enough to go. I have to already like you enough to go on a date with you. I don't just go on dates with anybody. Now, why would you lie like that? Bitch, why? How did I lie? How did I lie? How did I lie? Did I lie? <laughs> you are Drea. So, Lex everybody. P. Lex P. <laughs> everybody you went on a date on, you liked. Why um, are you bringing up stuff uh, from when, like, I was, like, 20? Like, we're talking about me as an evolved woman. We talk about me in the past three years. No, I don't go on dates with niggas I don't like. Who have I went on? Lex, please whisper in my ear and tell me who I went on a date with that I don't like. Get real close. Okay. I did like him, and you're fucking lying. I did. <laughs> <laughs> And you, I'm afraid of you. Anybody that can lie like that, I'm afraid of you. Oh my god! And you, really... I liked him. Okay. Did I? Okay. Let answer this for me. Okay. Did I not say that I thought he was cute? Did I not say that? That's not liking somebody. Did I not say that I thought he was cool? As soon as it was not fun to me no more, I stopped talking to him. So I'm trying to understand your point. You didn't like him. Friend, I thought that I did. When you go on a first date with somebody, do you know for sure if they're your type? But you like yeah. certain things. I've been about... wanting to get married before, by the first time he's Because you're me. crazy as fuck. You're nuts. But a normal person, <laughs> when you go on dates with somebody, they have certain characteristics where you're like, okay, I will go on a date with this person mm -hmm. because they meet certain standard certain characteristics right, cool right. let me go on a little date with you after you go on a date or two or three then you might be like you know what he ain't really my type mm -hmm. like that like to keep fucking with right, but right, i liked right. him enough to go on a date with him i don't go on people i don't go on dates with people that i don't like enough to go on a date with them mm -hmm. you're I, nuts no, i'm agreeing with you you're nuts. That's a good girl. Girl, why you be lying like that? That wasn't even a good example. Yes, I thought was. you was going to say somebody else. I mean... And he gave me some money. He my type. <laughs> he was my type after he gave me that money back for my Airbnb. Oh, yeah, I forgot he did. Yeah, bitch. I, I don't know for y'all niggas that don't be doing nothing. I forgot he did. But, I mean, but you didn't. you still didn't like him. I liked him in the enough. beginning enough to go on dates with him, to get to know him. And then once I got to know him, I realized, like, our views on relationships, who we are as who we were as mm. people just didn't align. Mm. And even with who he dating right now, I'm like, I knew I wasn't your type because... <laughs> you know how you be seeing who a nigga dating? Well, me, it was like, a point I, in my life where all I, I needed was I a lamb... Never your type. All I needed was a lamb chop and some jasmine rice, bitch. I was hungry. Anybody who was offering it, I was taking it. TGI Fridays, two for 20, bitch. I'm outside. I offered you that, though. So and you I mean, have to fuck with them niggas. I mean, sometimes you just want to be in the presence of a man. Mm. I got tired of eating uh, spaghetti squash with you. <laughs> they thought you was about to say eat pussy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> We had some wild times, but not that wild, bitch. But no, yeah, I just feel like you're wasting your time if you hanging out with people at this point that you don't see. No, I agree with that now. No type of future. But I felt this way for the past two years, three years. Okay, bitch, you think you're better than me because you just changed No, I'm yesterday. not saying, I'm not saying I think I'm better than you. <laughs> All I'm saying is that's how I have felt for like the past three years. I'm not wasting my time with nobody who I feel like don't already meet certain criteria right, right. before we even no, go on a date. I'm agreeing with you, but I'm saying people that are not living that, it's okay because we've all done it before. That's all I'm trying to say. We've all definitely went on like dates with people that we necessarily didn't like. Hell we yeah. Just trying to, you know. Yeah, I definitely went on a date or two when I was younger just because I wanted to go eat. Like, right. wanted to go out to eat. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I've been on a date with a nigga and I was like, I ate my food, got some food to go, and I boxed his shit up. Times was hard, baby. You not finished some potato okay. skins? Pass me that plate. Okay, you was wildin'. I never did that. I will box your food, my food. Your, ba your, your baby about to finish that grilled cheese? Box it up. I need all of it. Did you eat all of it, though? Hell yeah. You got two days with leftovers. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 
<laughs> Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, bitch. You wild, bro. But anyways, back to the topic at hand. I feel like sometimes it's okay to do kind of like relationship things if you're not in a relationship, mm-hmm. but just for the enjoyment of the moment. I feel like it's okay to live in the moment. Like, if we go on a trip or if we're at dinner and I'm touching on you and we're in the moment, kissy, huggy, whatever, it doesn't mean that I want to marry you. It just means I'm living in the moment and I want to have fun. So for this moment right now, you my man in this moment. It doesn't mean tomorrow I'm going to be like, so what are we? But you're crazy, though. You do realize yeah, that I and recognize that. Yeah, yeah. I don't care. I would go Because in this moment, it don't matter if I'm on a date with a nigga. I'm never in my mind thinking he my man unless we've had a conversation and but we've it's established about, that you my man. No, I know that. But what I'm saying is I love to live in La La Land. No, I, I, I went on a, I would go on a whole vacation with a nigga and pretend like they would call the room like, oh, Mrs. Such and Such, did you need? Oh, yes, that's me. I need this. And when I go home, I... It, I will never speak to that nigga again. But in that moment, yes, I was your girl. We had a grand old time. I don't believe you. You crossed me as a type who you already ordered um, cardstock with the name (laughs) on it. I might have. And you sending it out to people. And I might have done that before. You did. I got one. (laughs) And we still might use it. (laughs) Holding on to hope. (laughs) Bro, you are crazy. I don't care. I don't care. You should care about I that. I don't care. I feel like in the moment, if I'm happy and this is what I want to do, I'm going to do it. I, like Kanisha. I said, <laughs> from BetterHelp.com. She know I'm crazy. What are we doing here? No, I just feel like, okay, so for example, like I went to Dubai and I had a fantastic time. Like <laughs> me and the guy, when I came, it was like they were calling me Mrs. I won't say his last name. Because I don't remember it. <laughs> Probably <laughs> can't pronounce it. Either. Amen, too. But, like, the whole time they were calling me, and I had a, and it was like I was living in La La Land. Did that mean when I got home, I was like, okay, so what are we? No. But you didn't like him. I did like him. No, I you thought didn't. I did. No, you didn't. Until that. Because you called me, literally, while you was there. Because that Beijing had rubbed off on the bed. Like, why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> it was the Beijing for me, bitch. <laughs> I said, <gasps> and we ain't talking about the city. <laughs> I was like this. I, at first, I thought it was my eyeliner. Remember, I called you. I was like, okay, I keep getting. You ain't think you had that I much swear, eyeliner on? No, I swear. Why would you lie? You thought you had that much eyeliner? No, on? the first night, I was like, oh my god, I keep getting makeup everywhere, and I was like so embarrassed. I was like, but my eyeliner, like, I don't wear heavy eyeliner like this. The next night, I literally did not wear eyeliner, and it was still on. And I said, hmm. While he was asleep, I said, caught your red-headed. We fucking got him. <laughs> we got him. But wasn't he, like, bald right there, too? Oh, like, was, did you have to touch him? No, like, it was when I saw him in the morning. So what he was doing is he was leaving early in the morning, and he had some people out there that was doing his hair every morning. <laughs> so, yeah, no, literally, like... You he mean go, doing his spray, bitch? Yeah, doing his hair. spray. Doing his spray. <laughs> like, he was a freak. Like, he goes to the buy a lot, like... His hair was like... had a graffiti No, artist. it was like way back here. It wasn't like a little bit, like a little bit of edge. It was way back here. <laughs> he, I got the top off. I'm just like, like hot sauce. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. But yeah, so in the moment, mm. I didn't care. I woke up and I was still like holding his hand after I knew that. So when y'all was having sex, assuming... Uh, yeah, because why would I... So I'm assuming. Okay, if or if, whatever. or whatever. Okay. You ain't touched the back of his head? Mm-mm. You don't touch niggas' head when you I be fucking I definitely do, him. but... So why didn't you touch his head? Because I didn't want to rub the shit off. So you knew? No, the first night I stayed the night, we did not have sex the first night I was there. Mm. And that's when I woke up but the next morning. didn't have sex. Maybe. You just said we didn't have sex the first night I was there. I caught your ass red-handed. Bitch, I fucked that nigga, and I'll do it again. Shit, it's strict in this motherfucker. Bitch, I was having a great old time. I had a great old time. Yes, I fucked him. But at that point, the first night we did not have sex, I didn't realize what his hair was doing. We didn't have sex the next so time So how either. did you notice that he started back here? Because, you know, I don't really look at people's hairlines like like that. Like, I just look, as long as it don't look all funny, I'm not, like, going like this. Whoever I was do. Whoever was doing his spray tan thing, they were very fucking good because it was hard to tell. But the only reason I had really noticed it was because he was, I'm not a morning person, so he was waking up before me. Mm. So one morning I had actually just got up and I seen it. 
before he left, he was like, all right. He would leave me in the room in the morning. Like I like to. I like to be left alone in the room in the morning. So you can do key. So I can shit, do my makeup, you know, get everything together. All the real bad bitches know. Yeah. You got a do key in the morning when that nigga got one. That's why I hate about Mr. Cabo. He would never leave. He you. would never leave in the morning. <sighs> Where he would like what would he, he do? He would just be sitting in the bed watching me. <laughs> Nigga, please leave. You like that Diddy me? Uh, yes, I got kids to drop off at the pool, nigga. Dropping the Browns off at the Super Bowl. Period. So, anyways, but yeah, I noticed one morning, you know, the hairline was missing. So, yeah, but it was no problem. But like I said, in the in that trip, I was his girlfriend. You couldn't tell me I was not. That I was his fiance. I was his wife. But after the trip was ended, we did what we had to do. We had a grand old time. We tried to continue talking, you know, after I got home, but. I really kind of wasn't interested. Mm. In the moment, I was. I was living in the... I don't mind living in the moment. That's fun to me. Not everything... Not everybody you meet is somebody you're going to be with for 20, 30 years. It's okay to have moments with people. Because in that time of my life, that's what I was looking for. Mm. And I was okay with that. So, yeah, we were doing relationship things without the relationship. What's the what's the problem? Because buying a Birkin is relationship things. You want a Birkin? Right now. I don't really want You'll accept a Birkin. No, not that you want one. I know you don't. But you'll accept a Birkin right now from somebody that you're dating. I really like a condo. I'm just throwing it out there for whoever would like to accept the message. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, whatever. All right. right. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And we are here to talk to y'all about HelloFresh.com. Yeah, I love HelloFresh. Like, with traveling so much and always being busy, it just makes life super easy because they deliver pre-portioned ingredients to your doorstep, and it's all fresh. It's all delicious. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. Yes, and you never eat the same thing twice. It's 55-plus weekly options, and they have the Taste of Summer options now. I made that Old Bay shrimp and sausage boil the other day. Mm-hmm. But I love me some Old Bay. You know, it was it was giving what it needed to mm-hmm. give. And the best thing about it is I know a lot of y'all are traveling, y'all changing addresses. The best thing about it is you just go on their website, change your address, and they'll deliver the food straight to the address of wherever you are. Yes, and all of the meals are usually ready in about 30 minutes. So all you have to do is go to HelloFresh.com slash PoorMind16 and use code PoorMind16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash PoorMind60. You want me to read the next one? I mean, I read the first one. You know I got bad bit. Oh, let me pull it up. Okay, so the next topic that we want to talk about. Um, we found a tweet today, and I found it very interesting. So it actually comes from, I hope I'm saying this right, Aya's Corner. Shout out to Aya Badu. That's what it says. It says, you know what you never see on the internet? Single men bragging about married women being in their DMs. You know what you do see on the internet? Single women bragging about married men being in their DMs. How do you feel about that? Because I got something. I think I'm going to be opposite of what you say. So go ahead. I'm going to let you go first. Hmm. I feel like you don't really see that. Hmm. But I think it's more so just because, yeah, like, women like to brag about those type of things. I do. I feel like women like to brag about, like, somebody else nigga wanting to fuck with them. But you can go ahead and say what you have to say. I'll say this. Niggas do be saying the shit. It just doesn't get talked about as much because the topic of conversation has always been married men ain't shit, married men this, married men that. And it's more interesting or whatever the case may be because married men are not slick. And married men don't give a fuck. Married women, they move a little smarter. And I hate to say this, we all know that women cheat better than men, first of all. So there is a lot of married men out there that probably have them a little side piece or a side situation and you don't know nothing about them and they don't talk. You know why married women don't get talked about as much? Because they move fucking smarter. First of all, disagree. I just feel like men don't really care to Men do sometimes care. I think men don't really care yes, to they bless. Do. Men I are messy. That- I'm not saying that they're not. We know that men are messy. Okay, factual. Nobody is saying <laughs> 
<laughs> Nobody is saying that men are not messy. Mm -hmm. But I think that men don't really care, especially if it's like a young nigga. Like, for example, if it's a cougar bitch who's trying to fuck with a nigga and it's a young nigga. Those I think the worst ones. But go ahead. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, continue. continue. Finish your I'm thought. I'm sorry. They're going to be like, Lex always interrupting Dre. Well, since I did anyway. No, those be the main niggas that be bragging because you know why? They're young. They ain't never had shit. They want to feel like, oh, this dick getting me. I got a trip to Jamaica. She paid my light bill. Those be the main niggas that be bragging about maybe, it. Maybe, it, maybe they're bragging to somebody that they cool with, but we're talking about strictly online yes, shit. Yes, yes. I don't be seeing that shit online. I, I guess, I mean, yeah, because you don't be online. I do be online. I be I online. Look. This is the difference between me and you. The difference between me and you. I be online and I look and I observe. I don't say nothing. I just look and I observe. You... I do not say nothing. I don't you are a Twitter mommy. Well, I'll be tweeting about myself because who's more important than me? You tweet about yourself and you tweet, tweet about, about everybody else. No, I don't. I tweet about poor minds. Go look at my timeline. I will. And you be interjecting <laughs> on topics all the time. I like videos. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is. You be on Twitter and you be tweeting often. Every all day. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Exactly. Lunch, Nothing is wrong with lunch that. Break from However, seven, that's not really my thing, and that's never really been my thing right. to tweet all the time. So I feel like you see more than what I see, Facts. probably because you be on there. Right. But at the end of the day, I still feel like it's different. But you said it. I see it because I be on, on there more Twitter. Than I see it more on than Twitter. You. Niggas talk more than bitches these days. Niggas are talking about it, but at the same time. Let me tell do you. Do you have an example? Yes, I do have an Can example. Can I see it? No. Oh, I don't have an example like that. Didn't think so. No, I don't have an example of a woman doing it either. I don't have an example ending, but let me say this. The reason it's more interesting because when a woman blasts a nigga, she gonna read this down. She gonna have receipts. It's gonna be a whole presentation. When men do it, they just be like, oh yeah, nigga, that's why I've been fucking your wife. Okay, that, that but that goes... That. Okay, but so did you not just prove my point? No, I, they both talking. They just talking a different okay, way. Okay, no, but like just saying, like just blatantly saying, okay, that's why I was fucking your bitch, period. That's it. Leaving it at that. No, you still going a chatty to, patty. Going to the extent of getting receipts and posting receipts and tagging people and hitting up people and doing all of that, that's doing the most and I feel like that's more so some some woman shit. No, it's not. Okay, look. A man goes, you talking still have, is talking. I don't care if I say, Drea fucked this nigga last night. So you don't think it's a difference between you being like, I fuck this nigga, period, leaving it at that, versus posting intimate details, posting receipts, posting no. videos, posting photos. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is a difference. You know why? All right. You know why, though? Because at the end of the day, when I, if somebody says... If you say it out loud, you just leaving it up to chance. It's your word against this person's mm -hmm. word. Nobody has to believe you. Nobody has to believe them. It's Everybody gonna believe me. I don't lie. Nobody is gonna believe you, number one, because you lie all the time. But... Okay, so what I'm saying is you leaving it up to chance. If you just say something, it's like it's your word against this person. If you start posting receipts, then that's a different situation. Either way, it's being chatty. Either way, chatty is chatty. Talking is talking. It's more so, so petty. It's not chatty. I think it's petty because I think when people do those type of things, it's off of a... You're, you're doing that type of stuff off of emotion because you're emotional. Right, of course. But you only emotional because you care about this person. And I think in order to be petty... You have to be caring about somebody. That's to be why petty. I don't like nobody, man or woman, being like I'm petty. You're also forty five. You don't have to like somebody being petty, but you don't been petty. I am not a petty person. You've been petty. I've grown. I've seen you be petty, and I've also grown. That's fine, but everybody has been petty. Everybody yeah, has. That's, have, a, that's a normal human but emotion. Talk, but that's different. For, now I will say it's different being petty in real life versus being petty like on the internet. Mm -hmm. How so? Because that's petty is petty. Per, no, because you're doing a performance for other people. I'll be petty towards you because I want you to feel some type of way, and I need you to direct all that energy but towards me. Why do you me. want somebody to feel some? Type no, this of way. Is, I'm talking about the old me. That's how I used to perform. Well, I, know. I don't. I don't need the internet because at this point, if I do something on the internet, I'm trying to get a reaction out of the people, and then you trying to get a reaction out of the people. I don't need them involved. I need all that energy towards me. So that's how I used to use my petty. Mm. I said this before. Clout is a disease. 
and clout affects everyone men and women going back to the initial topic at hand i definitely feel like yes I have seen more women brag about fucking with niggas that are married than I have seen men brag about fucking with women that are married. And I don't care what you say. I just feel... You do care what No, I, I really don't. It's getting so loud. <laughs> I don't. Because I feel like, yes, I've seen more of it over mm -hmm. the years. Mm -hmm. It's just I've rarely seen niggas doing that type of shit because I really feel like niggas can be bought. Women can be bought too, but women are emotional. You listen to what I'm saying. Oh, everybody can you be bought. You understand me? You understand me? Shout out to Nancy. <laughs> women can be bought too. Men okay. and women can be bought, but okay, women are more emotional creatures. Right. I feel like as long as a man is getting what he came for and what he's looking for out of the situation, he'll keep <sighs> it cute and keep it on mute. But you're crazy if you think that men are more emotional than women. And I hate to get We're so not talking about, okay, well, let's talk about act acting on emotions. Let's talk about acting on emotions. Talk about. <laughs> Spit it out, bitch. <laughs> let's talk about acting on emotions. Men act more off of emotions. Mm. Okay, that's why I don't want to get too deep. But no, let's we talk can about, get deep because we always it. get off topic. Statistically speaking, 50% of black women... More than 50% of black women who get killed every year is from their spouse. And it always has something to do with a man doing something or a man getting caught. It's always the man killing. It's off of emotion. We are out there, out here killing our spouses. Okay, 50%. Over, but over 50%. Okay, of over women, 50. Of black women. I'm talking about black women who get killed. Yes. So you cannot sit up here and say that these no. men are not acting off of emotion. Men are more emotional than women. When it comes to their feelings and fucking with somebody, they are. And just because we don't, we are talking about the internet. So maybe women, okay, for your argument's sake, maybe women do perform a little bit more you on the internet. You ain't gotta do it for my argument's sake. I'm just saying, but let's not act like men aren't out here doing crazy shit. Maybe we just don't see it because it don't go viral that. as much. I think that's the thing. It's not Uchi Wally or One Mike, bitch. I'm not saying it's, it has to be either or. A hit that stuck like grits, But what though. I'm saying is I'm not saying that. All I'm telling you is my perspective, how mm -hmm. I feel about it. I feel like I have seen more women over the years Brand. out niggas that they fucked with that have been married than I have seen with men. Even when you, even when it comes to like blog sites and social media and all of that stuff, I feel like it's always been more women who I've seen publicly do these type of things. And I personally, to be honest, don't know any women in my real life who do those type of things. I do know women in my real life who have fucked with married niggas though. But I don't know too many that have outed. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to laugh. Why are you laughing? Because I hate this show. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> no. However, though, again, <laughs> I haven't seen many women right, right, right. who have outed a nigga that was married for trying to fuck with them as long as they was getting what they wanted out mm -hmm. the situation. Okay, but let me also say this, but that goes back to what I was saying. I feel like when women cheat, they're just smarter. It ain't about being smarter. I just think that a lot of the time men don't care as long as they're getting what they want from the situation. Mm -hmm. Even if they do love the woman, it's like, okay, as long as she paying my bills, as long as she doing whatever. Not long, paying my bills. You bitches are disgusting. Okay, but cougar bitches, that's what they do. As long as she paying my bills, as long as she paying my tuition, she doing whatever the agreement Not is. Not middle school. <laughs> whatever the agreement is, as mm -hmm. long as she's covering her behalf, I'm not tripping off the fact that she got a nigga at home. Mm. But with women, even though a lot of the time, sometimes women will be like, oh, I'm cool with the fact that he got a bitch or I'm cool or whatever. As feelings start to grow because we are women and after you become intimate with somebody and you have sex with them, it's inevitable that you're going to have feelings We're for this humans. man. We're humans. Humans develop. I don't care. Humans, Humans develop, develop feelings, feelings, but with women, it's more innate. It's more in our nature to be emotional. And this I is disagree. even coming from me, somebody who is way less emotional right. than you. Right, but I'm saying men, you have to stop undermining men's emotions. I'm not undermining them. I'm speaking on what I feel like I have seen. Again, two things can be, be true, true at and once. You're a smart girl. So I'm not debating you on it. 
I'm just, I feel like you're making this a debate. I'm just saying this is how I feel. Mm-hmm. This is what I've been saying since the jump of the topic. I was just trying to press some time so we can move on. <laughs> So, I just feel like, yes, in my personal opinion, I don't think that men brag as much as right. women do about these type of things. I think women feel like it's some type of accolade sometimes. Now, I do to agree. To feel like they fucking with somebody nigga. I do. Now, I do agree with that. Sometimes we feel like it's an accolade. But I feel like men do that as well because what men do is... You know niggas that done did this? I'll say this. I've seen a situation where a, a bitch will be fucking with a nigga who's like a top nigga, right? And so a nigga who feels like he's lesser than, he want to fuck you just to say, yeah, I fucked this nigga bitch. That nigga think he all that? Yeah, nigga, I fucked your bitch. Okay, I'm not making as much topic. money. This is not talking no, no. about what the topic is. The topic was single men bragging about married women, mar- bragging about fucking with married women, in their DMs. What you talking about ain't got shit to do with it. No, but what this is a single nigga fucking somebody's wife. You didn't say why. Okay, but I'm, we're talking about that scenario. We're saying, we're talking about a man who is up here and he has his wife. And this man, it may need, not even be about her. He feels like, you feel like you better than me, I'm about to fuck your bitch. Niggas love to fuck another nigga bitch. Married. But a nigga can only fuck a bitch if she want to let him fuck. Right, but I'm saying, and they're out here doing it, and these niggas are out here bragging about it. They are. Let's just agree to disagree, because we got to move on. It's getting too loud. Thanks. We can agree to disagree, because you wild. I'm wild. Hell. I'm a wild And one thing girl. about Lex, she going to always take up for the girls, even when the girls be wrong. <laughs> Me, I'm on whatever. <laughs> I'm neutral. Whoever is right is right. Okay, so let us know what y'all think in the comments and how y'all feel about it. Cause I'm interested to see. So, okay. Now a word from our sponsor, Bitter Help. What's up, y'all? It's your girl XP. And it's your girl Dre and Nicole. And y'all know we're gonna tell y'all every week. Please, 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 if you haven't done it yet, this is your sign. Sign up now to get counseling at betterhelp.com. Yes, BetterHelp makes things so easy. You can get connected with a counselor in under 48 hours. You can do video chat sessions. You can do live sessions. Like it's so many ways that you can talk to somebody and get the help that you need. Yes, and it's much cheaper than in-person therapy. And we have also, you know, partnered up with them to give y'all a little bit of a discount. I know personally, I have been doing therapy a little over a year now, and it has helped me tremendously with all the changes in my life personally that I've had going on. So you're going to get 10% off of your first month at betterhelp.com backslash poor minds. That's better com backslash poor minds to get 10% off of your first month. I promise you, you are not going to regret it. I feel like we could all use therapy, whether you're going through a hard time or whether you just need somebody to talk to and vent about. So, um, I love my counselor and I think y'all will too. I feel like, um, they make it very easy to match up with the kind of counselor that you want as well. So if you want a woman, somebody who's a Christian, whatever you need, they're going to make sure they get you the counselor that you need. Get your session on, period. So now we gonna get into the bed. Bow. The bed. Bow. The bed. Bow. 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 I can't even snap my nails are so long. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, so for the sex topic this week, I wanted to talk about female erogenous zones. I feel like, you know, foreplay is very important. Thanks. When it comes to sex, I think men don't really realize how important foreplay is. A lot of the time, niggas just be wanting to stick it in Mm. and fuck off the rip. And it's like, no, you got to get me turned on unless maybe I'm off that yak or... The yak? Yeah, well, I, I ain't seen you drink the yak in years. What's the yak? When I, say the yak? when I say the yak, I mean like liquor in oh, okay, general. okay, okay. Yeah, I don't drink that. Mm-mm. So, when I say yak, I mean liquor in general. So, I feel like in order for me to be, like, super turned on, we need to, like, engage in foreplay for a decent amount of time. Unless, like I said, I'm tipsy or high. Okay. So, let me... Off weed only, though. A little coke, a little meth. Okay. Now, that's your business. (laughs) And uh, how do you say it? Erogenous. 
An erogenous zone is any area that can produce sexual arousal when stimulated. One theory behind these sensitive areas is that they have nerve endings and receptors that are more attuned to light touch or gentle tickling. So what's your zone? Like, what do you feel like is something that a man can, like, if you're fully dressed, y'all are at a dinner date, where can a man touch you that's going to turn you on and make your coochie single? My neck. For my ear. Mm. I like, like, I don't see people on the internet be like, oh, that's nasty when somebody be licking your ear. I like that shit. I'm not much of an ear girl. I like it. It be turning me on. Mm. Okay. During, don't you like that? Oh, come here, let me say something. Did you like that? No? Let my arm go. Okay. <laughs> You didn't like it? No. What about that? That wasn't sexy. Oh. It seemed like you was trying to spit at me, like you was trying to like you spit you a like loogie. Spit. You said you like spit. I, was I did to say I like bone. spit because I do like spit, but a I combo? like like a dr I like like a dribble of spit, not a <laughs> spit. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I like personally my inner thigh. That's kind of like my area. Like if you like put your hand. What on about the breast? Well, that's something like that's sexual. I don't like that word. Breast. It does feel like it reminds me of Popeyes. I just feel. I just feel like it's too grown. You know how? Yes. It, like that's too grown of a word. Breast. That's what my doc, That's what my doctor says to me. Lift your breast. That's not sexual to me. No, breast sounds too breast. loud. Oh my gosh, breast. breast. Ew. Should so, we name this episode breast? breast. <laughs> No, okay, so I like the inner thigh. I feel like like if a guy, like if we're at dinner and he touches me on my thigh, he like rubs on it like a little. Don't rub me like that. Because you like it. You're erogenous. I am getting turned on. Oh, Move your head. Oh, you nasty. I like them nasty, nasty. <laughs> so, yeah, I feel like that's my inner thigh for me. Oh, that's one of the points. Oh, and mouth and lips for sure for me. Oh, yeah, like a kiss. That's gonna get the coochie wet every time, especially if you know how to kiss. How do you say it again? I'm sorry. Erogenous. Erogenous zones for women and men. It says the mouth and lips, ears, back up, back and nape of the neck, breast and nipples, clitoris and vagina, lower back and inner thigh. I'm not gonna lie. One of my favorite things is like if I'm like walking out of a door and like he holds the door open for me and he like touches the bottom of my back, like my lower back to like help me out the door. Love it. Love it. I feel like that's a it, lot of the times like being a gentleman and like pulling out somebody's chair and like touching them in little ways. A lot of times if you just being a gentleman, you're turning a woman on without her even knowing it. Like little touches mean a lot. It says the scalp. What if a nigga was like <laughs> Wait a minute, I gotta find him. Straight quick weed. <laughs> Nothing but glue. What if a nigga was like, that don't turn you on? I like when niggas like grab, like, see, I got braids right yeah, now. Yeah, see, when they, I got so braids. So I like in. when a nigga like grab my hair and like Hold put on, his. My nails. Okay. Mm. Okay, like this. This is getting a little crazy over here. Mm, yeah. You like that. No, but that's too rough. That's too rough. Come on, Woody. Come alive. <laughs> or <Boy>, start. <laughs> Wait. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That was rough. Leg. That's what they do. No, you gotta okay, rub it. Like, you gotta, like, rub your fingers gently. Yeah, you like the baby? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel it? <laughs> do you want me to grease Come. yourself? <laughs> No, I hope that nigga cuss <laughs> your ass out. No, I'm just saying though, like I get it though because I know the I scalp, like when I like yeah. like especially when I wear my real hair. I love when mm. niggas like rub their fingers through my hair okay. and stuff. So, so I get the scalp, that. Okay, I can but feel that. But what about <laughs> yo in a wrist? What if a nigga was like, ooh, ooh? <laughs> Shout out to Muse Beauty. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I never thought about that, but let's talk about it. I'm not you trying like to be funny. That? I no, I've no, never had that like happen. But you remember, like when Ray Charles 
used to shake people's hand and he used to be like... He used to do that to see if they was fat. Right, but what I'm saying is that may be their area. So a woman was like, oh, wait a minute. I know, right? When you... I never have... I have never been kissed. It's your nails, though. That's... <laughs> is, it t- is your coochie tingling? I don't know. <laughs> I've never been kissed. Okay, on... let me do it to you, Lizzie. That's what I'm saying. Let's see if you got the same reaction. I've never... Maybe it's this one. Because you okay. kissed... I felt a little in my coochie. You I'm did. Not, because when you kissed me, I felt it. Mm-hmm. I've never been kissed on my That's wrist crazy. before. crazy. Maybe mm-hmm. it is the wrist. Because I feel like maybe when you hold somebody's hand and, you know, like, something like this. Mm-hmm. So, we're, I like, like you know, if you're holding somebody's hand and y'all, like, in the movies mm-hmm. or something... So yeah, okay. I, that's a I new mean, one. I can, I can see that. It, okay, now this is the one that took me out. The area behind the knees. Mm, I don't. That's not it. For I me. can see that for me though. I got bad knees, bitch. No, but behind the if knees. If you feel behind my knees, you ain't gonna feel nothing but fluid, bitch. <laughs> Niggas been hooping. I'm tired. No. Mm-mm. I don't like that. So maybe behind the knees for you? Yeah, I think so because. Fun fact about me, I have always been, like, very ticklish underneath my butts in in between my thighs. Okay. So, I feel like I'm very sensitive on my legs. Like, right here. Like, if you tickle me right mm-hmm. here underneath my butt cheeks, it tickle. It really tickle and I'm going to laugh. So, you know what I just remembered? I said this in the past episode. Very sensitive It's area. not when people touch my ear. When somebody whispers in my ear, and I feel like somebody, I think Samaya explained it to me. When people whisper in my ear, like, really softly, it makes my butt tickle. No, don't do it, Let me bitch. do it. No. Let's see if it works. It Let's does see. work. Every time you whisper in my ear, it makes my butt Come tickle. Here. No, bitch. Come on. Yeah, we ain't, we ain't on that type of time. We good, bro. I got something to say. <laughs> no. So, it don't, no. <laughs> Bitch, you going to jail. So, no, no area behind my knees. So, I feel like this. When you're dealing with somebody sexually, <laughs> I feel like find those zones. And if you can tap into those zones before y'all even get home and back in the bedroom, you're already turning your woman or your man or your partner on before you even know it. So, mm-hmm. this like. We putting y'all on game. I'm telling y'all, this is something that y'all should all focus on. Absolutely. I love it. I love being touched. Like, I just think, again, foreplay is very important. I feel like facts. people downplay the importance of foreplay. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you have to. Like, niggas just be wanting to stick that thing but in. But foreplay starts, like, even before he starts to eat your coochie, suck his dick, foreplay can literally start... As soon as he come and picks you up. Lex, would you wear one of those um, panty toys? I have before. You were? We talked about this before. Mm-hmm. Throwback back, actually, that was the first time I did the panty toy mm-hmm. thing. We used to have a grand old time, too. Y'all nasty. We were. Mm. Amen. So now we gonna get into the bop. Hey. The bop. Bow. Bop. 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 I have a lot to say about the bop of the week this week. How much week. more time we got? We're not that long, bitch. We almost done. We you almost are. Done. I'm wilding You cutting up today. I'm sorry. Yes. So the reason I wanted to talk about this bop, because I'm so glad that a person this important in our community finally is doing this, because I am so tired of the narrative that... Um, R&B music, like I always say, is dead and this and that. And everybody wants to be toxic in music. And that is so far from the truth. That is so far from the truth. Like I said, y'all just want to listen to the same artist. Y'all want to be sexually attracted to a man to listen to his music or sexually attracted to a woman to hear what she has to say. But real people going through real shit. The realest one, when I think about my top five R&B like songwriters, this man is in my top two. Okay, no, top three, top three, top three. Really? Yes, top three. Never knew His pin game is very, very serious. Tank. Oh, yeah. Has dropped sure. a new song. He's about to drop an album. Oh, and, my God. Like, actually, the day after your birthday. Oh, my God. Let me tell y'all something. Tank is doing this. Tank is that nigga. Tank dropped a single called Let It Show. He's sampling Maxwell. Oh. And you know that's my song. 
So the 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 song is basically like he's saying, "How did I lose you? How did I blow that? How do we go back?" Tank is a begging ass nigga, he and he gonna begging. make it sound like I don't care what my nigga did. If he sing a Tank song to me, I'm taking him back every time. Tank got that begging music down to a science. Let it show, Tank. Y'all ask for begging. I'm going to listen to my Tank playlist in the car. I'm telling y'all, y'all asking for begging R&B music. It's been here, but Tank is letting y'all know it's here and it's very alive and it's very well. Let it show by Tank. He said, I should have been everything I promised. I should have not had to learn from this. You should have been first. Bro, this is the music y'all been begging for. Every time somebody drops some R&B, y'all like, oh, we don't want to hear this. What happened to the begging music? After this episode drop, I don't want to hear shit about no begging music. Tank is doing it. Shout out to Tank. Song is fire. It samples the Maxwell song. Let it show, Tank. You did your big one. I'm fucking with it. Mm. Amen, my brother. Mm -hmm. So... Time to get into some ratchet shit, per usual. Mm. So, my pop of the week is turn... Oh, my bad, wrong song. I got two, actually. <laughs> my pop of the week is Never Sleep. It's Nav, Lil Baby, Nav and Travis. Green? <laughs> Nav? <laughs> Nav went to the school? Nav! I meant to say that, too. Nav, not green. Oh, who... Oh, it's okay. I don't know if it's NAV or NAV. It is NAV? Na no, it's NAV. It's NAV. Oh, it is NAV. NAV. Okay. But not green, y'all. Not, not green. Okay, okay. So it's NAV. Hello, baby, and Travis Scott. Okay. Fuck with Never me. sleep. Yeah, I, I like it. I fuck with Travis Scott, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's not my big one, but I fuck, I'm fucking with you it. You heard it? Yeah. You don't like it? It's cool. Y'all know I love Lil Baby. Like, Lil Baby just don't miss on a verse. Yeah, he me. don't miss on a verse. He don't miss on a verse. So maybe I be a little biased because, like, I can listen to a song and then I hear Lil Baby verse and I be like, oh, this is my shit. His cadence, his his tone, everything. Yeah. He got it. He got it. And so do Travis Scott. To oh, me. Travis Scott don't miss. Yeah. Never miss. So I feel like, how can you lose? Because there's, I mean, there's one more person on the track. No. Not green. Mm hmm. Amen. Okay, what's your second bop? Mm, we just gonna do the one. Okay, cool. Shout out to uh, Nav, Lil Baby, Travis Scott, Bop of the Week. Okay, so now we're gonna get into our favorite segment of the week. It's Pour Your Heart Out. If you want your question answered on the show, make sure you email us at askpoorminds at gmail.com. If you're attending a live show, make sure you email us to get your question answered live at Ask poor minds live at gmail.com. In the email, you must include your name, your phone number, and your seat number and the question. So, yeah, hit us up in the email, period. You want to go first? Hey, ladies. So, boom, I've been with my boyfriend for a year. First serious relationship. First six months were great, but then he started moving weird. He don't text me as much, barely makes conversation, does not plan any dates or wants to do anything with me, but tells me how much he loves me and how happy I make him. Also, about how he wants to spend his life with me. I have spoken up about how I feel, how things feel different and how it feels like since he already got me that he don't need to apply pressure. Can I also mention, I call him with a lot of females. I caught him with a lot of female things in his dorm room. A pair of dirty ass fila socks, this nasty smelling lotion, red curly hair, body wash, and lube. We also broke up, but he explained that it wasn't what I thought. I forgave him. Well, we recently went to go pack up his stuff at college, and I found an enema with a bunch of blue packs all around his room. Help. He was great in the beginning, but I can't take it out of my mind that he's doing shady shit. Y'all, do y'all think he's on the down low? Well, bitch, maybe he just constipated. Possibly. <laughs> That's a possibility. That's I mean, what that's enemas what enemas for. been for for like ever. But besides the outside of the enema, Javier, you disagree? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, okay, besides the enema though, you have been not trusting him. Also, like y'all have to realize, like y'all are young. I, I wish, I could, I wish my like how I was in college, I could give my mentality to the girls. 
Because, baby, I was out here doing it. Like, Thanks. I was just, like, playing these niggas because they are playing you. Like, y'all are in college. If you think, I hate to break it to you, if you think that a man is being faithful to you in college, I'm sorry, sister. But I think social media, I think social media is to blame for these type of things. Like, also back then, I wasn't really worried about what niggas I was doing was fucking with because I never really even thought about them until I was around them. Oh, my God. Because we had so much going on. We was in college living. Now you all trying, trying to get your ass tested, bitch. I was trying to pass the exams. Yes. All type of shit. Like, sister, girl, have fun. Enjoy your youth. Y'all are in college. Like, I don't... I don't know if he's on the down low or not. He's young. He probably still figuring out his sexuality. He's young. He's in college. But if you have to be concerned or worried about that, just move on. Y'all need to learn to let go of people. We say this all the time. If something is not fun, move on. Now, I'm not saying that all relationships are going to be fun and it's all yippy and happy all the time. But not the good be yippy. The good should outweigh the bad. The good should always outweigh the bad. The moment I stop having fun with it, I'll be done with it. Period. That's a... Mm. You know who said that? Who? Drake. Mm. So, yeah. Move on. Question two. Hey, Lex and Drea. I'm 27 years old, fine and single. Great career and have my own everything. I have no issues dating. If anything, I can set up a date with Different men each day for an entire month if I really wanted to. Yeah, that kind of pull. I've been friends with a guy who's close in age. I've known him for four years total. When we first met, to my knowledge, he was single. At the time, after asking around, he's had an on-again, off-again relationship with his high school sweetheart, who's now his wife and the mother of his newborn son. He's been my sneaky link since we first met. We stopped talking at... We stopped talking a year later and somehow found our way back to each other. We're so close that sometimes he confides in me and vents about his marriage. The sex between us is a slam dunk. Baby, I'm talking intense chemistry between us physically and mentally, and we just can't seem to let each other go. Grandma and mama always told me, you lose them how you get them. So I would never want to be married to him because of his history and infidelity. I don't text or call him certain hours of the day out of respect for his schedule and his family time. I'm at the point where I'm okay with this. Hell, if his wife will be okay with a poly relationship, I would love on her too. But she's very reserved. I don't think he's being sexually satisfied. Since his marriage, we've had an affair. This will make me his mistress, and I'm okay with being the other woman. I want to let him go because I know this is all wrong, but I want everything that comes with him. I don't date men with children, but this is the only man on earth I'll make an exception for. I want to share this man. I'll be his second wife if he wanted. My sister has warned me because her husband has had an affair on her when they were younger, so she knows what it's like to be the spouse of a cheating partner. My heart and libido can't say no. Libido. Oop. My heart and libido. Can't say no, but my mind is telling me to stop before things get ugly. Please send guidance. Girl, you are way too far in. You doing too much. Talking about you want to be his second wife. Talking about you will let you will love on his wife. Baby, stop. It's too deep. Because you know what? I, the reason I'm saying this is because as soon as he says, what we talking about earlier, how women be wilding and cutting up. If he cuts you off, are you going to be chill? Bitch, what you going to do? I, I'm not going to lie. I've been in situations where I've dated and messed with men who were in situations. And it was nothing for me to cut the shit off and move on. You in, agreeing to be his second wife? Baby, you wilding. So you need to step back and reel it in, bitch. Because one thing he's not going to do is leave his wife. We all know that. He's not going to leave his wife. Um, so I think you should stop before things get ugly. And... Ten times out of ten, the wife is not going to want to share her husband. If they were Polly, he would have been brought it up and offered that to you. So, yeah. You need to cut this shit off. I don't like it. Because you agreeing to shit that you don't even want to do. I love on his wife, too. You're a sick Yeah, he bitch. didn't even ask you to do that. Yeah, like, why are you talking about loving on his wife? You want to love this nigga wife? That, I don't want no dick that good, bitch. <laughs> I love your wife, too. What? You're crazy. And I'm, this is coming from a crazy bitch. You crazy, Mo. 
I ain't never had no dick so good that made me want to love on his wife. What? It's getting too loud. Let's move on. All right, you got something to say? Go ahead. I don't really know what to say. I think this is not my expertise. Um. Yeah, girl, you wildin'. Like, leave that nigga alone. Yeah. Leave him and his girl alone. Let them be in a relationship. I disagree, though. I feel like niggas, sometimes they do be leaving their bitch. Leaving their wife for other bitches. But, however, he'll... It's a possibility, most likely, that he would do the same thing to you that, yes. later down the line if yes. he did that mm. for I you. I agree. I agree. I would so, never... If I was, like, with a married man and he left his wife for me, I would never... Never... Mm-mm. I don't want to be with nobody who leaves their spouse for me. I would never do that. Mm-hmm. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. Girlfriend, uh, fiance, wife, never. No, thank you. I'm cool. All right, question three. Is it my turn or yours? Yes, yeah, your turn. It's not? It's not my turn? No, it is my turn. Mm-hmm. Hey, Dre and Lex, I'm a 26-year-old fan of you ladies, and I'm writing in because I'm talking to this man that I met through someone I used to mess with. Me and the guy messed around for almost two years before I ever started talking to his friend. I really like his friend, and he treats me well. He's my BDB. Mind you, dude knows I messed around with his friend. Me and the guy were never in a relationship and just used to mess around. My question is, am I wrong for falling for the friend? Thank you, ladies, bitch, you not. Absolutely not. I told this story before. Me, if you watch the show from back in the day, y'all know I used to be in love with Throwback Bay. Me and Throwback Bay's, like one of his close friends, used to mess around, and me and Throwback Bay fell in love. And it's what's crazy is that me and his his partner still cool, and it's like strictly platonic. It ain't even nothing like that. But so, so yeah, no, you're not wrong. Sometimes you just meet people too late. Are you me? I'm all about timing. You're not wrong, sis. Do your thing. Have fun. Yeah, you know, what's the saying? One man's trash is another man's treasure. Miss one, next 15, one coming. Period. And that probably ain't good advice, (laughs) but that's our advice. Period. Hey, ladies. First, I enjoy watching you two. You both are intelligent, funny, and beautiful. But to my question, I noticed that the girls are sitting nice and glazed for days. And sometimes I don't see a bra strap depending on what you are all wearing. Do you guys use boob tape or strapless bras, or do you just let them sit on air? I'm a 34 or 36 double D, something around that mark, and looking for ways to get a lift without the bra. Thank you. Okay, well, girl, first we of both all, had my titties are fake. Fake. And we not, both had certain... I have implants. Yeah. So, I mean, and it's been a while since I've had my implants. Like, I got my implants in 2015, so I've been having them for, like, seven years now. But, I mean, yeah, when I wear certain stuff, I mean, they're going to sit yeah. up just because I have implants. And prior to me getting surgery, I always had really small boobs. So... Like, I just feel like they just sit. Mm-hmm. Like, they never really just been saggy. Well, I have very big boobs, and I don't wear a bra 98% of my life. Um, but even before, so, um, I got a breast reduction in 2017. But even before I got my boobs on, I feel like it's genetics. I've never had, like, super saggy, saggy-ass titties. Um, so, once I got my breast reduction, you know, when you get a breast reduction, they lift your boobs as well. So, that's why I don't have to wear bras a lot of the time. And I'm about to get my titties done. By the time y'all see this, my titties going to be done again because I'm getting another breast reduction because mm-hmm. when you eat and gain weight and don't take care of your body, the titties going to come back. And my titties definitely came back. So, by the time y'all see this, like I said, I'll have new titties. But, yeah, we can't say anything other than yeah. we got surgery. So, to answer your question, no, it's no it's secret. No tape, it's, it's no, no tape. tape. It's no nothing. We just both have had now, surgery. Now, I will say, I have used tape before. Not on this show. No, not on this show, but, like, going out. There was, like, a certain dress I used to wear where I, I used to wear a tape. Um, but it was just, like, literally, like, the tape. Like, some heavy-duty, like, double-sided tape. But other than that... Well, yeah, they have tape that you can use for yeah, your like boobs and stuff. Duty, and like I feel like we shit. both use tape. But I'm talking about... I think she was more specifically like asking show. about the show. Yeah. So, for the show, no. We just be free-balling it, girl. Free-balling these titties. But, yeah. So, thanks for the questions. Mm-hmm. Now it's time to get into the song. You ready for the song, sis? Am I? You ready? 
La da 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 da. Mm-hmm. Ain't that what he thinks? La da 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 da. Come on, I'm gonna do it one more time. You ready? You mm-hmm. see, I, I gotta la, sing the first verse. La da 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 da. La da da da. Mm. La da 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 da. Go ahead, Drea. See. No. Normally a brother wouldn't talk about his first time, but I'ma be real with y'all and say what's on my mind. mind now. I remember just like yesterday, just a little man I had no clue, just quite didn't understand. Look up to big boy for a little advice. Big he bro. Said, Long boy, whatever you do, just be sure to strap tight. So I was a little nervous about it being my first time, but I said, what the hell, this girl is too damn fine. My, my very first in the house on your couch in your parents' bedroom. Remember, my very first. I can't wait till the day when I see you again. Remember, my very first. It was just as special to me as it was oh, to you, girl. My very first. I will time. never forget my first. <laughs> It was Sunday afternoon and mom and pops were gone. We had to be on the low cause they were on their way home. We started kissing and it led straight to the bed. I can't believe this happened is what I'm thinking in my head. It lasted like a minute but it seemed like forever. We almost got caught off. Was just too damn clever. Her parents came home from church and it was at the drop of diamond. Man, I will never forget my first time. My very first time. It was just a caution appearances. Do you, girl? My That best. was not. I'm, we just keep singing. <laughs> what the hell is girl? I feel like, number one, we should have never even sung these songs. Why? Because it's very My apparent that best. neither one of us know the lyrics for real. I know the song. No, you don't. You just <laughs> sung the wrong part. Young boy, whatever you do, just it's... be sure you're strapped wise. He who didn't uncle, say young who, boy. Who he said young bro. Young boy, whatever you do. I know the song. Young bro. Young boy, whatever you do, just be sure you're strapped wise. Why would you say that to somebody? Be sure you're strapped twice. Because facts, you got to be careful Why would here. you strap twice? Strap Monkey is, pox is outside. Bro, strapping twice, the cons going to rub together and they're most likely going to burst. You should never strap twice. Well, this was 1993. Niggas ain't no more mm-hmm. better. Why did Marcus used to sing like his nose was stopped up? It was just as special to me as it was to you, girl. That was a bop, though, because I couldn't wait to have sex after I heard this song. I said, strapped twice? Yeah, I don't know if this song is what made me want to have sex, to be honest. I think that, um... Mm. I didn't even think about this song, actually. Clap your hands if you remember your first time. Your first time. Why would you say that? Clap your hands if you remember your first time. That's wild. That is wild. Some wild shit to say. Clap your hands if you remember your first time. He thought he ate that. <laughs> your first time. He did. He got you singing it in 2022. Hey, your first time, baby. Clap your hands if you remember your first time is wild. I ain't never clapping my shit because <laughs> that shit was a terrible time, bitch. I, you didn't like it. It was not a time. You didn't enjoy your first time? Bitch, I don't want to remember that shit. Fuck that. I enjoyed my first time. We made so we sweet love under the blue corn moon. With that white man. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. <laughs> We'll see y'all next week. Of La- course y'all was under the blue corn moon. You was with, uh, what was his name on Pocahontas? Y'all, what was his name? John was Smith! With- <laughs> you was with John Smith. La- Lex had La- sex with John Smith her first time. Then I'll do it again. <laughs> Clap your hands if you remember your first time. Your first John time. John Smith gonna watch this like, yo. Yeah. Clap your hands if you remember. It's your first time. <laughs> That's how he used to sing. Tierra Smith. <gasps> it's getting too low.